Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In the heart of Minnesota's heartland, where the fields stretch as far as the eye can see, lies a story that shook the small community of Blue Earth County. A tale of love, betrayal, and unspeakable tragedy. Here, everyone knows everyone. Secrets are hard to keep, and truths harder to bury. Yet, beneath this idyllic surface lurked a darkness that would soon be revealed. Jim Nibby, a name that would become synonymous with one of the most bewildering cases in the county's history. A local boy loved and respected, destined for a future bright and promising. But fate had other plans, plans that would unravel in the most unexpected and heart-wrenching way. This is not just the story of a crime. It's a story about the human heart, its depths, its deceptions, and its frailties. Today, we delve into the shadows, where truth and lies are intertwined, and the pursuit of justice uncovers more than anyone was prepared for. James Jim Mervyn Nibby, the son of Mervyn and Karen. Nihangel Nibby was born on October 30, 1983, in Mankato, located within Blue Earth County, Minnesota. He finished his high school education at Lake Crystal Welcome Memorial High School in the year 2002. Subsequently, he pursued further education at Minnesota West Community College on the Jackson campus. Throughout his years, from the eighth grade until the completion of college, he was employed by Hank and Jane Roloffs, providing his services as a handyman. Upon the completion of his academic journey, James embarked on a professional path as an apprentice electrician at Maple River Electric, starting in October 2005. Jim was an active member of several organizations, including the FAA, the Ducks Unlimited, Lake Crystal Chapter, the Garden City Rod and Gun Club, and the Minnesota Pheasant, Inc., Blue Earth County Chapter, he had a passion for outdoor activities, such as hunting, fishing, kayaking, and training his dog. In his leisure time, Jim enjoyed hitting the golf course, playing volleyball, and engaging in various DIY projects. He married Jennifer Lee Gilman on May 24, 2008. Jennifer Gilman also grew up in the rural backdrop of Minnesota, born in 1977 and six years Jim's senior. In high school, she was known as both attractive and popular. Faced with an unexpected pregnancy at 16, Jennifer was resolved to succeed as a mother. She gave birth to a son and dedicated herself to being the best parent possible. Her commitment saw her through nursing school, ensuring a future for her and her child. Eventually, she managed to purchase a home and land in the rural parts of Blue Earth County, Minnesota. Jennifer's dedication to her son and her career left little room for a personal life. But that changed in 2007, when she met 24-year-old Jim Nibby. He was assisting a friend during a medical emergency, and Jennifer was the nurse on duty. They started dating and soon found a mutual enjoyment in hunting in each other's company. Jim fell deeply in love and decided to propose, first seeking her son's blessing, which he received. Jennifer accepted, and they married in May 2008. Continuing her career as a nurse, Jennifer often held two jobs to make ends meet. Jim, an apprentice electrician, earned significantly less than his wife, which could have been a source of frustration for Jennifer, who was used to financial stability. Her family publicly stated that she felt the strain of being the family's primary breadwinner, among other marital strains. Nonetheless, Jim was deeply in love with Jennifer and endeavored to make their marriage work. In the summer of 2010, he bought his wife a shotgun, a gift that preceded his untimely death shortly after. On August 31, 2010, Jennifer Nibbe made a 911 call, reporting an intruder in her home. She informed the authorities that the intruder had slashed her with a knife and fatally shot her husband. James Mervyn Nibe, only 26 years old, was found deceased. Both Jennifer and her teenage son appeared to be shaken and distressed. Jennifer told the authorities that the intruder had worn a stocking over their head, 
which prevented her from providing a detailed description. Jennifer reported that she was in the bathroom when the sound of a gunshot startled her. She hurried out only to confront the intruder. She recounted that fortunately, the gun malfunctioned and the assailant then pulled her by her hair into the living room. Paramedics rushed Jennifer to a nearby Mankato hospital and she was released after receiving primary treatment. Jennifer displayed bruises on her neck and cut marks on her thigh to the officers, presenting them as evidence of her struggle against the intruder who she claimed had tied her up with a rope. She also mentioned that before escaping, the intruder warned her, you're lucky you're not dead. Nonetheless, her account raised doubts among the investigators. They observed inconsistencies, including the lack of any signs of struggle or robbery in the house. The detectives were particularly dubious about the cut marks, which they thought were too precise to have been inflicted during a chaotic altercation. Court documents revealed several inconsistencies in Jennifer's statements, such as initially telling the sheriff that she heard a gunshot while showering, and later changing her story to say she was brushing her teeth when the incident occurred. Police also noted that it was rainy and muddy outside, but no tracks were found in the house. Jim and Jennifer Nibby's family and friends informed authorities that the couple had separated and were experiencing marital difficulties. Financial troubles plagued Jennifer and Jim, including falling behind on payments for a second mortgage on their home and accruing substantial credit card debt. Jennifer's cousin also disclosed that Jennifer had been sending explicit texts and photos to another man, indicating infidelity in the marriage. Jennifer's family noticed that in the months leading up to the tragic shooting, she had lost a significant amount of weight. The naturally slender blonde appeared almost anorexic. Police soon uncovered another dark secret of Jennifer Nibby. As a licensed nurse, she had been abusing prescription drugs, stealing them from her patients. She also received tramadol through the mail and stole prescription pads from her workplace to forge prescriptions for opioids contributing to their financial woos. Jennifer also kept a journal in which she detailed an affair with another man and expressed her desire to end her marriage. Despite acknowledging her husband's good nature, the police were able to confirm the affair while Jennifer was under surveillance. They caught her visiting her lover's apartment shortly after her husband's death. Furthermore, the police discovered an insurance policy Jennifer had taken out a $250,000 life insurance policy on Jim just a few months before his death. Jennifer Nibba was arrested in front of her office on September 10th, just days after her late husband's funeral. During her time in police custody, she admitted to a drug addiction. In one of the interrogation videos, she was heard saying, the pressure of everything, the finances and the drugs, you live your day waiting for the next fix. She also confessed to murdering Jim, claiming that voices in her head compelled her to do it. Despite her defense attorney's efforts following a psychiatric evaluation, Jennifer was deemed competent to stand trial. Jim's family wanted to bury him next to a plot chosen by his parents, but Jennifer rejected this request, insisting on a separate burial site. She also kept Jim's belongings from his family who desperately wanted items of sentimental value. Jennifer sought to control the situation, disregarding the wishes of Jim's parents and siblings. According to those present at the funeral, Jennifer did not shed a single tear. During her trial, Jennifer claimed she suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, allegedly caused by Jim, who she accused of physical and sexual abuse. However, the prosecution found no evidence to support such claims, as Jennifer had never filed a police report regarding the alleged abuse. The case grew more complex when the autopsy report on Jim revealed positive tests for HIV and hepatitis. In June 2012, Jennifer agreed to a plea deal, pleading guilty to second degree murder. She was sentenced to 17 years in prison, followed by 102 months of supervised release. The court also ordered Jennifer to cover the funeral expenses for Jim, totaling $11,400. Jim's family filed a wrongful death lawsuit, 
seeking $1 million in compensation in 2014, after a jury mandated her to pay $220,000 in damages. Jennifer also offered a public apology to the family. Official court documents indicate that the 46-year-old is serving her sentence at the Minnesota Correctional Facility in Shakopee. Her prison records show that she will be eligible for parole in August 2027, with her incarceration period ending in February 2036. Jim's father passed away in September 2011, a little over a year after his son's death. He never obtained Jim's possessions that he desired, nor did he witness justice being served. The cause of Jim's father's death was essentially a broken heart. The Nibby family requested the cemetery board to permit Jim's parents to alter their plot so they could be buried beside their beloved son. Consequently, Jim's father was laid to rest next to him. The story of Jim Nibby is a haunting reminder of the complexities of human nature and the unforeseen paths our lives can take. In the end, justice may have spoken, but the echoes of this tragedy continue to resonate, reminding us of the fragility of life and the depths of our human experience. If Jim's story has moved you, or if there are other cases you would like to explore, please share your thoughts in the comments. Your insights and suggestions help uncover stories that matter and bring them to light. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button if you want to see more content like this. Your support helps me continue journey into the heart of true crime stories. Stay tuned for more investigations that seek the truth behind the headlines. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and peace.